You like my mess of towels? I need to, they're clean, but I just need to put them away. All right, what's up today? We're doing some weeknight dinners. I'm like mixing up my kombucha here. I'm about to open. So if you're new to my channel, what's up? I'm Jessica. I'm really glad you're here. So I've done these videos a couple times on my channel. If again, if you're new here, this is not what I do. Like cooking is not what I do. I mean, I cook, but not like that's not what my channel is about. <laughs> Um, I typically do like vlogs. I do like makeup-y things. So if you like this video, I hope you stick around. Try one of my vlogs. I try recipes in those all the time too. But the whole goal with these videos is to share our favorite recipes that are super fast. Super fast, super easy for dinner because I've got two kids, a one-year-old and a five-year-old. They're picky-ish. Some of them will eat some of this. Sometimes I'll adjust it. I'll kind of talk about that as we go through but they're fast and that's the whole goal because we all know <laughs> whether you have kids or not, doesn't matter. Dinner time is just that time of day that you're like, gosh, what are we making for dinner? I don't know, what do you feel like? I don't know, let's just order in. So these are some that I'm gonna share and I'll share my other videos down below where I've done other recipes that are our go-to. So tonight's, the one we're making tonight and then I'm gonna make another one tomorrow, later in the video, but tonight's is a go-to recipe. It is so fast, it is delicious. And it's one that if you've watched any of my vlogs, you've seen me make it numerous times because we make this like twice a month at least. So the recipe itself, I will link below. Um, it's actually one that I found in this book. This is a really good cookbook. If you're in need of like something with quick everyday dinner recipes, that's literally what it's called. But Jessica Merchant who wrote this, I found what I'm pretty sure is her blog and that recipe's on the blog. So I can link just this recipe if you're wanting it, but it is a good book. You can get it on Amazon, I can link below. Tonight's dinner is puff pastry pizza. This you can make a million different ways. So the version I'm showing you is with goat cheese and zucchini. Obviously not everyone's into that. I bet I lost some of you just then mentioning zucchini and or goat cheese, but you can do the same thing, but just do pizza sauce and cheese and pepperoni, green pepper, onion, whatever you want. You can make a million versions of this. So that's why I wanted to mention it, but the version I'm making is the, the best one. It's so good, oh my gosh. So let me show you what you need. This is gonna be low key, okay? I'm not a cooking channel. So this is gonna be like, I'm pulling my hair back, washing my hands. We're gonna be low key. This is not a professional operation. <laughs> Alrighty, so here's the recipe in question. I always double it because when you buy puff pastry sheets, which of course you need for this, it always comes with two and I'm like, I'm not gonna open it and then not use the other one. Plus Tyler and I alone can double this recipe and eat, <laughs> eat most of it. So add some kids into it too. Uh, I would definitely double it even if it's just the two of you because I feel like it's pretty good leftover as well. So got your puff pastry sheets. Fresh ingredient wise, like produce wise, you need zucchini. Um, honestly, I'm just gonna try to use both of these. This one is a little wonky on one part, so I'll be able to use some of it, all of this. Probably be too much zucchini, but we're fans of it, so it doesn't matter. You also need lemons. You'll need the zest of the lemon. And then cheese wise, we've done it with like true goat cheese, kind of like this, but it's really messy and it's a lot of work. In interest of time, we've tried it with the crumbled goat cheese and it's still really good. So that's what we're gonna do. But I did go in for the real mozzarella versus shredded like in a bag. We've done that as well and it's still okay. So again, saving time wise, that would save you time, but it, mm, there's nothing like fresh mozzarella. So I did get it already sliced. So I'm hoping it makes it a little quicker to chop it the rest of the way up. Then you just need kosher salt, pepper, red pepper flakes if you can handle the spice. Tyler is the only one that puts this on his like part and garlic powder. So let's get to work. All right, so first things first, um, clean the zucchini off. You're basically just gonna slice it. What's interesting and something I've never done until this recipe is that you actually will lay these out and put the kosher salt on it and that will help draw out more of the liquid. And you just leave it that way for like five minutes and then you kind of use a paper towel to get any excess moisture out. And so we've tried it without doing that. And again, you can totally do it. And the weirdest way, this is the most time consuming part of the recipe because the rest of it is such a breeze. You can make it without it, but it definitely makes for a slightly soggier pizza. Again, it's not like end of the world, but it, do it does make a difference when you do it. So just reporting it, we've tried it numerous ways and I definitely think it's worth, this is huge. I might cut this one in half, like lengthwise. Yeah, and this part's like way too squishy. I think that might be to the compost it goes. But we've made this with yellow squash as well. I don't remember if I already said that. And sometimes we'll do like half yellow squash, half zucchini. We, I don't think we've tried it all yellow squash, but you totally could. 
So if you like had some on hand or you were growing some or I don't know, sometimes I'll like look at the store and the yellow squash looks better than the zucchini does, you know? This is gonna be way too much. So we are gonna just spread this out, sprinkle it with some salt and pepper. No, just the salt. If you know, you know. What am I even saying? I'm too hungry for this. This actually might be just the right amount of zucchini. So, five minutes. All right, so meanwhile, we are gonna get some parchment paper on our like, full-size baking sheet. Um, you wish me luck. Nice, Jess. And we're gonna place the puff pastries on this. They're not gonna fit perfectly side by side. I kind of just overlap just a little bit, but it works out pretty well. And of course the oven is preheating currently to 425. So the nice thing is like while the zucchini is doing its thing over there, you can get the other stuff done so it works out. It's not like it's wasting time, you know what I mean? Now I had this previously frozen, so I put it in the fridge to thaw this morning. And it thawed out pretty well, so that works out really nicely when I actually remember to. So, just kind of, oh my gosh, puff pastry is so good. So yeah, that actually fits kind of nicely. So there we go. I might cut off a little bit of this extra. I always get really nervous about paper in ovens, and I know like parchment paper is like oven safe, you know, but even still, I don't like to have too much excess like hanging over the edge. I just get nervous, it's gonna catch on fire. All right, so this is ready. So this would probably be a good time to say the recipe says freshly grated mozzarella. I have cut my fingers one too many times trying to hold a big thing of fresh mozzarella and grate it. And then I, it just drives me crazy. So I'd rather just cut it up because <laughs> it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be shredded. Like it's all gonna be delicious as it is. It doesn't really matter. So like I said, these are already kind of sliced. So I'm just gonna kind of cut it into rough chunks and honestly, <laughs> the chunks are so good on it. It's like the best part of it that it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be pretty. And you know what? This is actually going faster. I didn't get sliced last time. This might be the move. This isn't even really a cutting board. <laughs> it's not even really a cutting board. This is like a what we use to put like flour and stuff. <laughs> eh, I use it as a cutting board too often. Don't tell Tyler, <laughs> he'll get mad. So we only need, when we double the recipe, we only need a cup. I'm gonna go ahead and eat one of those. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. We're just gonna do it all because um, I don't think I've ever put too much cheese on pizza. <laughs> I just don't think there's such a thing as too much cheese. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that I didn't get quite enough for double the goat cheese. So we're just gonna make up for that with mozzarella. Because at a certain point, when you're buying goat cheese and I'm doubling it, I'm like, that's expensive. <laughs> It's a lot of money on goat cheese. But I do think if you can do goat cheese, like I know when I was pregnant, I think goat cheese is one of the ones you couldn't do. So we had to just do it with mozzarella and it was still really good. So if you don't like goat cheese, I think you could totally make it without it. And it's still really good. Yeah, this is definitely more than a cut. All right, good enough. One for mama. <laughs> All right, this is literally what I do. And the longer you let it sit, the more water you see how it like pulls the water out of the zucchini or the liquid i should say um so that's good enough but like you could leave it longer and you'll be able to dab more off in a few minutes but we're gonna call it good there all right so my favorite part putting the mozzarella on it just kind of get it on there and then i'll spread it out but this is kind of the base so obviously this is not a pizza that's got like red sauce on it um, but this is, obviously you would have put the red sauce on if you were doing it that way. But we're gonna spread this out. It does say to leave like a one inch border and I definitely recommend that because then it kind of gives this really awesome fluffy crust all around. Um, I feel like one inch is, like it didn't have to be a full on. I am gonna try to break some of these apart. This is why like if you did do the shredded mozzarella, it totally works. Might not be as delicious, but it is still delicious. I wonder if eggplant would be good on this. If any of you guys try that or have tried that, let me know. Cause it's obviously like similar, you know? I feel like that might be good. I love that I thought this might not, this might be too much mozzarella. I think it's like just enough, honestly. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Next step, the zucchini. We're just gonna put it all over the place. This is what's awesome. Like once you've done the prep with the zucchini and the cheese, you're, you're sailing. You just layer it all on a bacon, that's it. 
And I just like that it feels elevated, like zucchini aside. I feel like if you were just doing this with pizza sauce and cheese and pepperoni, whatever, it really does feel elevated doing it on puff pastry. And I feel like this would be a good appetizer too. Like you could cut it into smaller bits. There's, I've never made it like the puff pastry shells. I feel like that could be really good too. Okay, we've got, what is too much zucchini? No, we know. Stuff it where I can. All right, I feel like that's good enough zucchini wise. So it says put a little more salt. I don't wanna go too crazy on the salt. You can always add more later. Garlic powder. Big fan of garlic. And I feel like garlic with the zucchini is nice because it like pulls out more flavor because I feel like zucchini itself doesn't have a ton of flavor, I don't think. I just like it. My sister just sent me a recipe for zucchini brownies that she said like my daughter is over at her house and she actually ate it and that's a big deal. Like I can't believe Genevieve actually ate those brownies. So very excited to have that recipe because I've made my fair share of various versions of like hidden veggie muffins and cupcakes and brownies and she always sees through it. So the fact that she ate it without realizing it is huge. So I've got the recipe. We got zucchinis growing in the garden. We're doing it. So, okay, back to this. Goat cheese is now sprinkled on there. That's why I like having the crumbles is kind of nice because cutting up wet goat cheese, like the mozzarella was a little easier. The goat cheese is so sticky, <laughs> so messy. Okay, and then the zest of, it says one lemon. I have two here. We're gonna zest one and kind of see, because I don't remember what I, what I typically do. Got my little microplane zester, which works out really well. We're just gonna go to town. Just this combo of flavors, like the lemon with the goat cheese, and then my secret weapon at the end that you're gonna see that I know some of you guys know. Comment below if you already know what my additional thing that elevates this like times 100 when you eat it. Let me know if you already know, no cheating. No cheating, but the lemon zest with it, I feel like pairs so nicely. These are just such weird flavor combos, but it's so good. It tastes like something you'd get at like a really fancy hip restaurant. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like that's probably good on the lemon zest. All right, into the oven, she goes. If you guys saw the vlog where, <laughs> where I made this, and as I was putting it in, <laughs> I dropped the entire thing. <laughs> and it slid into the oven. And how we rescued that, I have no idea. I still don't know. That was a nightmare. <laughs> okay, 20 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna do 18 and check. I feel like our oven weirdly cooks things very quickly. The other nice thing I love about a meal that bakes the rest of the way and you're like good, is that you can actually clean up. Like I'm able to clean up the cutting board and put the spices away and make sure who that we're all good to go. So then when we're ready to eat, like clean up after dinner is gonna be so much faster. So I'm a big fan. <laughs> also a big fan of like dump and go recipes like in the crock pot. So if you have any recommendations, I feel like anytime I've tried recipes from a crock pot or slow cooker cookbook, they're never any good. But if I find one online, it's usually pretty good. I don't know what the disconnect there is, but if you have any that are like, your go-to recipe, let me know. I definitely have like four or five slow cooker recipes where I just put it all in and leave it and it's done. Um, like maybe at the end you add a few more things, but, and those, I mean, there are go-tos, but you know, you get tired of it. You want like different ones. So please, links below if you've got any good ones. <sighs> I'm just so hungry. Also, Tyler is about to be home with the girls, like literally any minute. I'm like, perfect timing, perfect timing. We can get the table set. That's Genevieve's little chore is setting the table. Does she always like doing it? She does not, but she does it, you know. <laughs> so, girls are home, obviously. Um, so, all told, I was trying to think through like, okay, on a normal night, how long does this really take me? Cutting the zucchini, and then while that sits, putting the puff pastry, cutting the cheese. I think cutting the cheese, LOL, <laughs> I am 12. <laughs> anyway, I think all told 10 minutes of prep and putting it together, then it's in the oven for 20. So 30 minute dinner, but I would say like a 10 minute dinner, cause to me it's how much time am I actually like hands on? Cause the rest of it, you know, it is what it is. But I just, it's so good. I'm excited to show it to you. And I'm excited to sink my teeth into it. Okay, she is done. Oh my gosh. So one thing that happened this time, we've probably made this, I personally have probably made this like 25 times. <laughs> I've never had this happen. There was a bunch of liquid like bubbling and like on the side. And so I literally kind of pulled it out a little bit and took paper towels just to soak it up. 
and that worked. My only guess is it's from the mozzarella and I've never gotten the sliced mozzarella. So I don't know. I've gotten the same brand of mozzarella though, like in the same log form, not sliced and it was fine. So I have no idea, but it's all good. Everything's done. It smells amazing. We're gonna do the taste test. Please ignore my messy stove, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the way I typically cut this is with a pizza cutter. Um, I've done it with scissors actually before too, and that totally works really well. Just saying, that was, that was, that like blew my mind. I remember when I first started dating Tyler and I would go to his house. We were both much younger. It was like over a decade ago. Oh my gosh, 13 years ago. Anyway, um, so we lived with his parents and they cut their pizza with scissors, guys. Scissors. It was the craziest thing. But then ever since then, I'm like, wait, that's kind of genius. If the scissors are like kitchen scissors and they're sharp enough, genius. But we're gonna do, if I can find it, a pizza cutter. And I did let it sit for like five minutes. I feel like that just kind of helps everything solidify a little bit. You know what I mean? Ooh, still hot. Um, so this should be, yeah, kind of the separation. They do really do like cook together the two pizza crusts, if you will, the puff pastry things. So that's kind of nice. They just kind of morph into one. Oh, you hear that crunch? Let's see, yeah, boy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can see where the liquid was, the like side of it's not quite, it's still a little bit wet. So I don't know, guys. I guess maybe the key is just to get the big thing, but we solved the problem, no big deal. Pinocchio, we know you're hungry, buddy. He always like slaps in his bowl, okay. <sighs> you're honeying, okay. That's the secret, you guys. I haven't shared yet. Mm. So it's not in the recipe, but we thought about it when we first made this and we were like, wait a minute. Honey would be really good drizzled on this. And it is. So it takes it from good to great. It really does, because it's like okay as it is, but the second you put honey on it, it's like, it really tastes, it's, tastes, tastes then, artisanal. I like putting the red pepper flakes on it too, because that takes it from great to greater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, we don't put the honey like on the leftovers. We don't put it on the whole pizza. We just do it on our plate because a you know You want to make sure you get the right amount, but B that I don't know I feel like then you can add it later and it's a little fresher mm -hmm. so, so good. good. Look at this. Oh, baby yeah. mm. All right taste test. It should be oh, Here. Oh, you just pick it up. I always fork and well, What yeah. do I normally do? so good it's so good <laughs> and i like what i said i like a little bit of spice because it adds the spice with the sweet of the honey so mm -hmm. good. i'm a mess so the girls got home from my sister's house they were playing with their cousins today just an awesome summer day they were like in the sprinkler they mm -hmm. were doing the most so tyler got home with them and genevieve was like i just want to go to bed so she's in bed <laughs> not hungry I'm like okay she, and then ate, Lissy, she ate snacks on the way home in the car <sighs> And she's like, I'm daddy, I'm not even hungry. Can I just go to bed? <laughs> okay. And then uh, Felicity, we were, she, we had her in here and we were going to like have at least her eat with us. <laughs> and she was not having it. She's no. asleep. Yeah. Like they're done. just gone. <laughs> they're done. I'm like, all right. On days well. like this when they play with their cousins, they come home and it's like six and they're just like, I'm done. I'm yeah. Like, they are. It is bedtime. Put a fork in them. Yeah. So, okay. 10 out of 10. Like we've told you, highly recommend. Mm. Recipe is linked below. All right. Day two, folks. <laughs> it's been quite a day. I'll uh, link the vlog. This will go up first. So in a few days, the vlog where I explain the chaos of this day <laughs> will be live. Subscribe, stay tuned. So, all right, tonight we're making a dinner that again, I will link the recipe below that we haven't tried. And I feel like it's kind of cheating on this video, but I toggled with a few other recipes, but I was like, I'm dying to try this. It's kind of the perfect time. And I think I might have mentioned earlier in this video that another influencer, maybe even two, have recommended this recipe that they love it. So we're gonna try it. So it's easy, one pan, sausage tortellini. It looks so good. It looks very easy. I think easier than yesterday's recipe. And apparently it's delicious. So the main things you need are like smoked sausage is what we're gonna use. And then you need broccoli, you need frozen or fresh tortellini, and Alfredo sauce. Everything else, you got like some chicken broth, some oil, salt, pepper, and maybe some Parmesan cheese on top. But generally those are like the main things. So it says prep time is five minutes, cook time is 15 minutes. And uh, so yeah, I, I think, I feel like that generally should be how quickly it goes. So let me gather the ingredients and we'll chat through it. Okay, so this is the recipe in question. So we've got everything gathered together here. 
Um, we've got tortellini, which is just like half, you know, it's like a two pack at Costco. So we've got that that's been in the freezer. So those are just frozen. We've got broccoli, some, we're keeping it easy. Just the squeezable garlic, judge if you will, but it does make it faster when you're trying to save time. We've not um, used, we've, that's right. Um, we've got some chicken broth. It needs some Alfredo sauce. I got this at Aldi. I've not tried this specific kind, but you kind of doctor it up a little bit anyway with the garlic and onion, so that's always nice. Not that this might not be good straight up, but I feel like any sauce, like so many of them just need like a little bit of like a little push of salt or I don't even know, just a little flavor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a little oomph. Um, we've got olive oil, like I said, smoked sausage, and then we've got onions. Tyler just very graciously diced up for us. Thank you, Tyler. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Parmesan cheese. So that's, that's all we need. I feel like it seems like a lot looking at it, but generally, I don't know. I feel like it's not a crazy amount. Alrighty, so we've got some other stuff we need to cut. Really, most importantly, the sausage, because we're gonna basically cook the onions and then you pretty much within a few minutes, did I just say pretty much like three times? Uh, within a few minutes, you put the sausage in. So I'm gonna make sure the sausage is good to go. I don't think this is the kind of sausage she calls for. She says 12 ounces of sausage in casing and sliced. I used Italian. So I feel like this isn't quite right, but I feel like smoked sausage would be good in this. So I'm just doing it. I'm, I'm also talking to Tyler in case you guys are curious. I'm really just talking to him. I feel like it's gonna be good. I can't I picture what she means though. Can you picture that? Italian sausage, but it's in casing and then you slice it. So it would have to be. It could be the kind that you have to like, like do the boiling pork part first. But it, I don't think so. Cause again, this is like an easy thing and she didn't mention any of that. So I'm, yeah, so I don't know. Perfect. No, this is gonna be delicious. I'm not worried about it. Tyler, when you make smoked sausage, you always like cut, not in this dish, but like you cut really big portions and cook them. Like when we've done like smoked sausage and sauerkraut. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I'll do the small little bit. But I like the small because I like that it's bite sized so that I'm not having to cut one up while I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Make my bites, if you will. All right, sausage is cut. Let's get it cooking. Nokio in the house. Hi, Noki boy. Hi, hey, handsome. All right, we're gonna get some uh, olive oil going. Throw the onion in for a minute or two. We got these. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. Okay, it was Sir La Tabla which is kind of like William Sonoma-esque, but this specific little, it's like a spatula, but it's like kind of spoon-like. There's something about this that I love so much. And since I use mostly non-stick type pans, I don't want to scrape it up. So I am notorious for using <laughs> metal spoons, whisks, etc., And I try to be careful, so I'm trying to be better about it. This has been one of my favorites. Okie dokie. So we're gonna add in a little bit of the garlic. I'm not gonna like measure, measure. Like I said, if you have real garlic and you have an extra minute or two, obviously that's better. But it is nice to have minced garlic just on hand. We actually usually have minced ginger on hand as well. You can get even like freezer little packs. Actually, let me show you because it's kind of cool. Yeah, I did not know these existed these little tiny ginger things. I wanna say I found this at like Trader Joe's or something, but one cube is a teaspoon of crushed ginger. And I feel like ginger is one of those things that the odds of you having that is a lot slimmer, most likely versus garlic. Anywho, all right, so we've got that going on. I, I gotta move this to low because I was also dealing with the kids just a second ago. So we're a little behind, but that's okay. I have a strong suspicion a lot of you guys know what I mean. <laughs> so we're gonna add in Slice sausage, mix it up. I mean, anytime you've got onion and garlic cooking, it instantly makes the whole house smell so good. I'll turn it up a little bit, let it go. All right, if you ever needed proof that influencer life is not real <laughs> and what you know you see, like I've got it somewhat cleaned up behind me. Y'all, we've got dishes, dirty dishes, clean dishes in the dishwasher that have been there all day we need to put away. Everything's a mess over here, like, so just, just know. It may look clean, it's not. <laughs> All right, so that's almost done. I'm gonna add chicken broth. So it calls for three fourths a cup of chicken broth. I'm gonna add more because this is kind of a big thing of tortellini, but we're cooking it all, baby. I'm not keeping half of this frozen. We're just gonna cook it all. So yeah! we're just gonna kind of see how it is. I feel like it'll be fine, but I do think we're gonna need more chicken broth to kind of help it cook and boil, you know what I mean? So gonna, it says three fourths. I feel like this is like, double what it calls for ish. So I might put more than 
like maybe I'll do about double the broth. We'll see, I might just add a little bit more as we go. The other reality is, I was thinking like, oh, we're gonna have a nice family dinner tonight. Cause again, last night as you saw, no, Lissy can't hang, <laughs> she's too tired. We went and visited the school today, Genevieve was at the dentist today, like it was an exhausting day yet again. Anyway, I'm cutting up the broccoli. So um, it was just quite a day. So like Genevieve's, we'll see if she can hang long enough to eat this. Um, I also know her, I'm like, she'll probably, eat, she'll try the sausage. In theory, she should like the pasta, but you know five-year-olds, so let's see. All right, broccoli's good. I'm kind of cutting it up a little bit smaller so that like if it's this big, I'm cutting that in half too, just because I feel like it'll just cook a little bit faster. It's a little more bite size. I don't know, I'm a big fan of not having to cut things up while I'm eating it, if I can avoid it. And bonus points if it makes it cook faster. All right, I added the chicken broth. I did end up adding about like double, and now I'm adding in the broccoli. Oh, I'm a big fan of broccoli. So it says add the broccoli florets, and then it says to go ahead and add the tortellini yeah. and the Alfredo sauce. That seems fast. Oh, there's even more broccoli to cut up. How did I miss that? Is this all gonna fit in this pan? You need kind of a, well, I guess I am adding more, but still, I feel like, <laughs> I don't know who would have a pan. You might almost need like a big stock pot, just if you don't want to have to worry about it like overflowing. And that's not even like, and nothing else has really been too doubled other than the broth, but like, this just seems like a lot to fit in one pan. So just FYI, use a bigger pan than maybe you think. Even if you don't have double the tortellini, although <laughs> shout out if you have the same tortellini I have from Costco. <laughs> I feel like we always have that in the freezer. All right, it, we are really pushing it size wise with this. And I've got like this chunk of frozen that I'm trying to get to like <laughs> eat up enough. Anyway, um, we do, however, we're also supposed to add in, where is it? There it is, the Alfredo sauce. So we're gonna go ahead and add it in. I'm gonna get the lid on it so we can kind of steam. Mm. Mm, yes, please. But we're supposed to get it to boiling, which it already is, but it says seven minutes once it's boiling. Might give it a little more time since this is like, oh, it's coming apart. All right, either way, we're gonna let it, let it go. So we're grating Parmesan, which we usually have this in our fridge like for a long time because it lasts a while. This is our OXO grater, which is pretty good, I have to say. Um, ow, <laughs> as I say it. Uh, it really is, but like I was talking about yesterday, like grating mozzarella on this, you guys, even on the larger one, is an absolute nightmare, which is why I did it the way I did it yesterday. But this is pretty great because then at the bottom, you can see all that you've done and you can see how much it is. So we need a half cup, which honestly, no, no, fourth a cup. So we're, we'll probably do a half just because, I mean, you guys know, we just added a bunch, like so much tortellini. <laughs> so... I'm just grating. We'll probably have a little bit left. I might grate some on top of this too because I feel like oh, that would yeah, be really good. But yeah, mm, I love freshly grated Parmesan. But if you want to save time, of course, you could always buy, you know, shredded. But yeah, there we go. Perfect. Ha! Ah. All right, we're adding in the cheese. And then we're going to add in some salt and pepper. Anyone understands that reference, you are my best friend. Salt. And papa! <laughs> I know some of you guys do. <laughs> uh, okay. And then I'm just gonna give it a few minutes to kind of melt in. I'm gonna stir it, and that's gonna be that. We'll serve some, maybe grate some of this Parmesan on top, and then put some of the fresh basil ooh, on top, which smells amazing. Yes. All right, I've got my Crocs on. So we're going over to our garden, which usually is Tyler's domain. But you guys, this year, I have been the gardener. He planted and I helped. I've been the one pruning and tending to the garden, which is very new to me. But we are gonna pick some basil because this says it's really good topped with fresh basil. Um, I just recently cut a lot of these back. You guys, sage, please don't make fun of the butcher job I did. This sage plant was huge. And I was like, we, I don't even have a good recipe to use with sage, so if you do, please let me know. Like, I was at the point where I was like, I'm just going to pull the whole thing out. Like, I, it's taking up more room than what I would ever use it for. So, let me know. I would love a great recipe for, like, a sage brown butter sauce. I tried one recipe, and it was awful. So, yeah, anything you make with sage, please let me know. Please help a girl out. But, yeah, we're going to get some fresh basil here. Oh, my gosh. It smells. There's nothing better than the smell of fresh basil. 
Also, don't sleep on tarragon. We grow a little bit of it. The only thing we really use it in is like if you're frying tomatoes for like like with a breakfast, with eggs, whatever, put some tarragon on that. We'll take it to the next level. All right, I'm watching Bob's Burgers. Um, Tyler's running to the store to get more Alfredo sauce because I thought certainly this is a genius idea to add more liquid and now I feel like it's not saucy enough. <laughs> just sounds funny, but you know what I mean. I feel like it's too liquidy, so that's on me. So he was very gracious. We have a store like two minutes for us, so that makes life a little easier when it comes to that. So I would say, even if you add more tortellini, do not add too much more broth. That's all, follow the recipe, don't listen to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to put away these clean dishes I mentioned <laughs> while he's gone, and then we'll get it in there and hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. I did eat a bite though, and it was, already pretty good so i feel like a little more sauce and it would be just perfect he was gone 10 minutes here we are <laughs> we're just gonna pour some in just see i feel like this is gonna make the difference but like i said just don't double it just follow the recipe you guys i don't know why you guys are watching me cook in a video i obviously don't know what i'm doing <laughs> oh this looks exactly like what i was hoping for though so that is good and i feel like just the time it's sat it kind of Soaked up a lot of the excess liquid we had. Yum, yum, yum. All right, she is done. I took another bite. She's real good, you guys. All right, <laughs> we've got, well, I've gotten into comfier clothes. All right, taste test, babe. All right. I've already tasted it like 10 times. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get like everything in one bite. The fresh basil is good on this, but it's an interesting choice because I don't think I would have thought of basil with these flavors. It seems like. Yeah, I like it. You like, I mean, no, I like it too, but it it wouldn't have been first thought. I guess that's it. Mm. It's real good. Yeah. The extra sauce was clutch. Follow the recipe, folks. I've said it three times, okay? Good, right? I have no notes. So fast. Like, so mm -hmm. fast. So, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did by giving it a thumbs up. I know this is not always my, like, normal stuff. I'm usually, well, I guess it was still kind of vloggy chill, whatever. But if you want to join me, your online bestie, your new online bestie, I hope you'll subscribe, stick around for my other videos. Um, I'd love to have you. And yeah, thank you guys that have watched for years that are watching this video. Cause I know, I feel like generally when I do videos that are a little out of the norm, it's an interesting bag, like who watches versus who doesn't. So thank you if you did. Um, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.